Welcome to Financial Education for the Nation. My name's Warren Shoot, and I'm here today with you to talk about the hello, was it goodbye, help to buy. Hi, welcome. So, the help to buy ISA is about to go. So if you're watching this after the 30th of November, 2019, I'm sorry, you're too late unless you made it in there. So the help to buy ISA was put in place by the government back in 2015 to encourage savers to save money for their first house deposit. And it's been a fantastically successful ISA for people to get involved with. Uh, there was a report out in 2017 to say that over 1 million help to buy ISAs have been opened at that time, and over 1.8 billion had actually been saved, which is phenomenal, huge numbers. Um, at that time, they actually launched the successor to the help to buy ISA called the Lifetime ISA, and that's been running since 2017. And now they're actually phasing out the help to buy ISA, and it ends this month, the end, the 30th of November. So I wanted to give you a quick update because there's still time to open an account if it applies to you. Now, we're going to start with a couple of basics, a bit of a comparison um, talk today. A couple of the basics, first of all. Um, what are the main differences or similarities between the two? So what's the youngest age? The youngest age for a help to buy ISA is 16. So from a 16 year old, that's the best place to start saving for a house deposit. Now I appreciate not very many 16 year olds have money to save for a house deposit, but mum and dad, grandparents, you might want to help out and contribute because you know it's looming. You know that that house deposit payment is gonna come one day. So if you are 16 or 17, the help to buy ISA is the best home for your house deposit savings. However, if you're 18, it open up the, opens up the option for you to save into the lifetime ISA. And that's the success of us, the new one that's gonna carry on. So just because they're phasing out the help to buy doesn't mean it was terrible, it wasn't any good, but that's the original one. So from age 16, you can have a help to buy ISA. From age 18, you can open a lifetime ISA. Now the lifetime ISA has an age band in which you qualify. So that's from age 18 all the way until 39. It's actually, yeah, 39. It's just as long as you're not 40, you qualify. So 39, 364 days, you can open a lifetime ISA. If you're 40 or above, unfortunately you're not able to open a lifetime ISA. Now, when you've opened your lifetime ISA, you can fund it ad hoc, periodically, every year, whatever works for you, but you can continue saving in it until you're age 50. But when you're 50, you have to stop, you can't access the money then, uh, sorry, you can't save any more money into it then, and you can access it age 60 for retirement. So the Lifetime ISA has a two, uh, two purpose, two purposes behind it. I don't know a two-pronged approach, but that doesn't sound quite right. It has two purposes behind it. The main driver, the main reason for the Lifetime ISA was to replace the help to buy so that you can use it for your first house deposit. However, if you decide not to do that, you can keep funding into it if you wish, and you can access it for your retirement, and that's from age 60 onwards. Okay, so that's the, that's the starting bit of ages when it works. How much can you put away into a help to buy ISA, and how much can you put away into a lifetime ISA? Okay, the help to buy ISA, it's quite unusual really, has a month one contribution limit, and then a maximum contribution thereafter. So as a separate limit for month one, and then a separate limit for thereafter. So month one, you can put in up to 1,200 pounds, so 1,200 pounds. And then thereafter, you can save a maximum of 200 pounds a month. Now they're maximums, you don't have to go to that extent. If you don't have that level of money, you can put in a lesser amount, but the maximum on month one is 1,200 pounds, and the maximum thereafter is 200 pounds, okay? Now, um, the bonus for the help to buy ISA doesn't get added until you withdraw the money for your house purchase. So when you're saving along, all, all what's going in is just like a, a cash ISA effectively. Money's going into the account um, and you won't see any bonus. You'll only see your interest being accrued on there. And then eventually when you draw the money, um, when you need to buy it for your house purchase, 
you can then you then get your bonus added to it then. And the reason why I emphasize that is because with the lifetime ISA, you can save up to £4,000 a year, so a considerably more amount of money, and the bonus gets added to it straight away. So when your contribution goes in, give it a I say straight away, give it a bit of time for administration, the bonus gets added by HMRC of 25%, and then it gets added every single contribution, every single month, for example, as you go forward. Now, technically, there's not a minimum term for either of these contracts, okay? However, if you want to retain the bonus, then there is. So the help to buy ISA, you have to have saved at least uh, £1,600 in order for you to qualify for a bonus. So for you to get a bonus out of the other end, you have to have saved at least £1,600, which is basically the £1,200 in month one, and then two months of £200. That doesn't have to be put together that way. It can be put together a different way. It could be, for example, um, 16 months of £100. But you have to have saved £1,600 to qualify for the 25% bonus when you withdraw the money at the other side. So technically there's a minimum term of three months, although in reality you can just withdraw your money at any time and there's no penalty. That's a real key thing. You can put your money into a help to buy ISA and withdraw it at any time and there's no penalty. The lifetime ISA. The lifetime ISA is slightly different. The lifetime ISA, there is a penalty. So of course, you're putting your money in to the, um, the savings plan. There's no contractual term, although if you're gonna use it for a house deposit, you must hold it for at least 12 months before you can use the money for a house deposit. So if you're looking to buy a house in the next six months, well, it wouldn't be any good because you're not getting any bonus on that money. It has to be in there for a full 12 months before you can buy a house. So say, for example, you're buying a house in 13 months time, hey, it's a great idea. But if you're buying it in 11 months time, it's no good. Now, if you access the money in the meantime, then there is a penalty on that money. And the penalty effectively is six and a quarter of percent. It is actually 25% of the amount withdrawn. So if you look at it this way, if you say you put in 100 pounds, you're gonna get a bonus on that of 25 pounds, 25%, so you've got 125 pounds invested. They charge you 25% of the full 125 pounds in the account. So 25% of the money you put in and 25% of the bonus. That effectively is about um, 6%, I think, six and a quarter percent of the amount of your contribution. So not too onerous, if I'm honest. I don't think that's too bad of a penalty, although it's quite ironic that the, um, the regulator, the FCA, don't allow, allow no, they do allow, they don't like exit penalties um, or charges on contracts, yet they're applying one to the government's own um, lifetime ISA. So there, there, there's a slight difference there between the two. Um, so the, the minimum term really on a lifetime ISA is a year, and there is a, an exit penalty um, if you were to cash it within the first year. You certainly don't get any bonus on there as well. So what can the ISAs be used for? Well, the help to buy ISA is purely and solely house purchase for your first house purchase and there's some criteria around the house purchase um the criteria for the house purchase is that if it's in london it has to be up to a limit of four hundred and fifty thousand pounds if it's outside of london the limit is two hundred and fifty thousand pounds now for a first time buyer that sounds quite like, like a nice problem to have if you're going to be buying a property in excess of 450 in london or 250 outside of london that's quite a nice challenge to have, but they are limits and you won't get your bonus on your account if you purchase your first home, which is in excess of those values. Okay. The lifetime ISA has a similar criteria, but they've done away with the London differential. And with the lifetime ISA, it's just 450,000 pounds, whatever, or should I say, wherever the property is purchased. So you can see there's some quite technicalities behind the different things. What I would probably say as a summary that most first time buyers are not really gonna be affected by these limits, I wouldn't have thought, so therefore it's less of an issue. Um, there's nothing that I'm aware of that allows indexation for future years of these property prices, but it would seem reasonable and sensible if they were going to do that. Um, 
what happens to your money when it's in the ISA? Now, this is quite an important thing. So if you use the help to buy ISA, the help to buy ISA effectively is a cash ISA. So the money is saved in a cash deposit account, a savings account with a bank or building society, and interest is added to that money. And then when you withdraw the money for a house purchase, your bonus is then added at that stage. And the bonus is 25%. And remember, there's a limit. You must put in there at least £1,600 to qualify for the bonus. Um, with the lifetime ISA, the lifetime ISA could be cash, just like the help to buy. So it could work like a cash ISA and your money goes in there and your bonus gets added and it's the bonus and your contributions that attract interest and it grows, so that's more attractive. And remember, it's gotta be in there for a full 12 months for you to retain that bonus. Um, or if you find that you're um, saving for a date that is further in the future, you could actually introduce some stock market investment in there. So you can actually do some equity investment so you can have risk to your money as well as actually potential growth. Now, which one is better really does just depend on when you're actually looking to buy. So if you're looking to buy in the next three years or four years or maybe five years, then certainly cash is king. Cash is where you wanna go so the help to buy or the cash version of a lifetime ISA is really gonna be where the money should be. However, if you're looking further than five years, preferably further than seven years, and we're going out and thinking, well, actually, I wouldn't mind starting this now, but I'm, I'm 18 years old, reality is I'm gonna to look to buy my first home when I'm 30, for example, um, therefore I've got a good 10 plus years on my side, I'm gonna actually go into the stock market. And in that example, a lifetime ISA would be more advantageous for you over a cash ISA because you've got the equity returns who are gonna help you um, grow your fund over that time. Okay, so where should the money go? Where are some of the best places to hold your, uh, open your accounts um, at the moment? So Barclays have probably got the headline rate for a help to buy ISA, and they're offering 2.55% as a cash deposit help to buy ISA. Now, how long that 2.55% will continue for after the flurry of money's gone in uh, for this uh, end cutoff date on the 30th of November, I don't know, but at the moment, they've certainly got the best rate out there, 2.55. You can always withdraw the money um, or uh, if you don't feel it's attractive or even transfer it to a lifetime ISA as well. Uh, the lifetime ISA, depends which way you want to go. If you want to go for the cash version, then I believe the Moneybox um, cash lifetime ISA is one of the most attractive out there at the moment. It's paying like 1.4, I think, something like that. So it's less than the help to buy, um, but you can put more money in there and you're getting interest on the bonus, remember, as well, which is a big bonus. Excuse the pun. Um, the best equity or stock market-based lifetime ISA, I'd probably shout out to our own Lexo.co.uk. Um, they probably offer the best lifetime ISA because the portfolios that are available to them. So go on to Lexo.co.uk. They've got a range of 10 different portfolios that you can access with their lifetime ISA. Um, the only downside is I think there's a minimum uh, investment amount on there of 20,000 pounds. So you would need to open up another account in addition to the lifetime ISA to qualify. Um, and then the technicalities around actually what happens to the money when you purchase the property, I've detailed in a, a blog article relating to this uh, video as well. So you can read it about read about it there. The main thing that I'd really bring your attention to is the bonus for your help to buy ISA is not applied until completion. So the challenge you might find yourself there is if you're relying on that 25% bonus to form part of your exchange of contracts, um, deposit, it won't be there till completion. So you might have to find other funds to supplement that. And then obviously on completion, the bonus is paid to the, the conveyance of the solicitor's account, and then it's there available for you to use it. Um, with the um, lifetime ISA, I was gonna call it a junior ISA then, so many ISAs in my life. With the lifetime ISA, um, that, that's fine. It just gets paid uh, when you go on an exchange of contracts, fine. But if the purchase doesn't complete, then it must go back into that lifetime ISA and that's something that the solicitor will um, arrange for you. And there, there's gonna be an administration fee um, to um, facilitate this payment, etc., charged by your conveyancer. And I think typically it's around about 50 pounds plus the VAT. So it's not, it's not too onerous, not too onerous. So there you go, there we have it. So which one, let's sort of summarize, which one should we do? Is it worth doing everything else? Um, let's start with, is it worth doing to start with? 
I'm a huge planner. And I think the reason it's good to be a planner is because you've got time on your side now for a potential expenditure that's going to afford you in the future. And making relatively small savings now, month in, month out, regular commitments from your bills account to standing order is going to certainly help you. If, if not, it's not going to be enough necessarily, but it's going to certainly contribute towards being and supporting your house deposit if it's your aim to do that. If you're a parent or a grandparent watching this, thinking how can I help my grandchildren or children? Well, rather than giving them pocket money um, when you see them, whether it's weekly, monthly, however, um, consider doing this. This is a much greater legacy or gift that you can leave your children or grandchildren to help them onto the housing ladder. Um, so yes is the short answer. If you feel that either you or your children, grandchildren are gonna buy a house, is it worth doing? Yes, definitely. Which one? Okay, so which one? Here we go. If you're 16 or 17, or if the saver is 16 or 17, help to buy ISA. It's a no brainer. The reason being is you can't open a lifetime ISA until you're 18. So it doesn't matter, there's no point looking at it. If you're 18, which one should you do? Okay, if you're 18 and you are um, going to buy a property in the next five years, then I still think there's room for the help to buy ISA in your equation. The thing I like more about the lifetime ISA is the bonus gets added with your contribution and you can put in more money than you can under the help to buy ISA. So although your budget may not allow for you to put in more than 200 pounds a month at the moment, if you were to come into a windfall, if you were to sell something, if you were to um, just get gifts at Christmas or whatever, and you could afford to put more money in, remember every single penny that goes in there up to 4,000 pounds is gonna attract a 25% bonus. So that's what makes me feel that the lifetime ISA is more attractive, even if you're buying short term and you're going to uh, use it as cash. Now, again, the benefit of the lifetime ISA is if you're if you're going to buy the property in more than five years time, let's say you're still, let's say you're 18 and there's absolutely no way realistically that you're either going to have saved enough or you're even going to be ready or prepared to settle down and buy your first home. You're very happy renting and living with friends. Then using the lifetime ISA and actually investing the money in the stock market um, is going to give you a much greater return over the time, allowing time on your side, than a cash uh, rate would. So that's where the lifetime ISA trumps it. So as a summary takeaway for you to sort of um, digest and make sure that you uh, can, can uh, take something away. It's very important to take things away and actually action on things. If you're 16 or 17, then the help to buy ISA is the better option because the lifetime ISA is not available. And please, Get out there and open the account now. It's not a recommendation, but from my research, um, Barclays are offering the best rate at 2.55 on their help to buy. If you're 18 years old, okay, um, I'm, I'm going to tip towards the lifetime ISA and then say if you're buying it in the next five years, then look for the um, cash version of that. I think Moneybox had a very good uh, account. Um, if you're looking to bo do a lifetime ISA and invest for more than five years, so in other words, you want to buy the house out into 2024, 20, 25 onwards, then the Lexo um, lifetime ISA there is very good. The only downside, like I've said before, is that you need to open up with more than £20,000. So hopefully that's been of help to you. Make sure you make hay while the sun shines because we are on the final countdown to the 30th of November. Um, Quick summary, thank you so much for all, all the uh, listeners and viewers who message in, ask me questions, stuff. It makes my life so much easier um, and more enjoyable because I know I'm answering the questions that you want. Uh, if you haven't responded or written in yet, please do so quickly because at the moment I'm still responding to everything myself, um, but we are um, developing the team. We're, we're developing the team. It's always going to stay small because I enjoy it, but um, yeah, we're just getting more um, bums on seats to help um, support you guys. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. My name's Warren Shute. This has been Financial Education for the Nation. Until we speak again, take care.